Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is Chris Gamble, and today we're going to go through the schematic editor, which is also called EE Schema, and we're going to just kind of see all of the different available options and how you can actually get started in making schematics. So first we're going to launch the KiCad launcher, which I've already gone over in uh, previous videos. You can see that I've already created some schematics and PCB layouts here, but these are actually blank right now. So we're going to actually click the launch button, and you may see if so if you're just starting out if you don't actually have those files already created you're gonna see a message that says this is the first time uh, there's no no file exists but you don't have to worry about that as soon as you hit save uh, you won't see that message anymore and so that is one thing I I suggest people do is just to start off by saving it so let's go over some of the buttons though on the top here so uh, you can start with a new project here you can open your project save your schematic project which we just did your page settings, which we'll go over in a subsequent video. Printing, uh, cutting, copying, pasting, undo, redo, uh, finding components, finding text, zoom in, zoom out, redraw, uh, fit it onto the page so if you're already zoomed way in you get lost. This is for your hierarchy and we'll go over creating pages and the, the need for doing all this later. And then your library editor, your library browser, your annotation, your ERC or electric rules check, your net, net list generation, your bomb generation, your uh, association, so going from a schematic to a layout, there's an intermediate step, it's called C CV PCB. There's uh, PCB new, so you can jump straight to the layout if you'd like to. And then if you wanna, actually when you start your uh, PCB and you wanna import that information back into your schematic, then you'll be able to do it uh, with, that, with that button. On the left side here, we have uh, grids, we have units, so you can choose inches or millimeters. We have cursor shapes, hidden pins, and finally, drawing wires in any direction. And then the important thing, and this is something that uh, always tripped me up when I got started with, with KiCad, all of the useful buttons <laughs> in both the layout and the schematic editor are on the right side here, and we'll go over those in a little bit. So to start out, though, we see that we have... Uh, you know, a, a page here, single page. Uh, you can see down in the bottom here. So if you click, uh, if you hold your control key and you roll your, your mouse forward, I'm sorry, you don't need to hold the control key. Uh, <laughs> you can actually zoom in here and you can see that uh, there's a standard uh, drawing sheet and then you can actually in input information here. So since uh, KiCad's out of France. It is an A4 sheet. It's a European style. People in the U.S. are probably more used to a letter eight and a half by eleven inch uh, letter sheet, but or you know different drawing sizes. Uh, this is your program, your dates, and then you can actually fill in your information here. Let's zoom back out. Zooming can get a little wonky, but like I said, if you if you are zoomed way into a corner or something, you just go up to your uh, you go back to your fit on the screen and you go to a home view basically. Okay, so let's actually start by just dropping a single component here. Um, just to really have something to talk about here. Um, so on the right side, we have place a component, and this will pull up a list once you actually select the tool and click once. It'll come up with a list, and you see there's nothing here. And again, this is this is one of the things that's very confusing when you're getting started with KiCad, uh, because you, you know, in, in other programs you expect to see just it go straight to a list, and there is methods behind this madness, and, and we'll get to that later. Um, but the the thing that I always start with is listing all, and so this is your entire library. These are all the parts that are currently available to you. So let's just pick a standard, a standard component here. And another tricky thing in KiCad is that the generic list they call device. And so this is your capacitors, your resistors, all of your generic devices here. This is really kind of your home menu. And so I wish they would have called it home or something else, but you know you have to deal, deal with the cards you're dealt. Um, so let's just drop a resistor. So we'll select this, hit OK. And you can see that we actually have a resistor that you can then click, and you have one resistor. Now if I click again, this is still selected in the uh, Place a Component menu. If we click again, now you can see why you kind of want to do the, uh, why why it was like that. You see that it has a single uh, component that's already on the sheet. So if you want to place it again, you simply click and you can place another component of the same type. So uh, that's single components. Um, 
let's let's go through some of the other things here. So you can place power ports, you can place a wire, you can place a bus, which is multiple wires. You can break out that bus. You can uh, bus can connect buses together, and then you can put no connection. That's for a, a single pin on a component. You can say no, nothing needs to be connected here. And we'll go into that once we get to the electric rules checks. You can place a junction. You can place a net name, a flag, or a global label. You can place a hierarchical label. Create a sheet. Create a pin from the sheet. And we'll go into that once we go into hierarchies and why that's important. You can place a hierarchical pin in a, in a sheet. A graphical line if you want to draw stuff and do artwork on your schematics to help clarify things or create tables. Uh, text, same kind of thing. If you want to create tables, it's good to place text. You can uh, place a bitmap image. And finally, you can delete items. So let's just do that real quick. We can delete these items. All right, uh, so that is kind of the basics here. Uh, we will, in another, in other videos, we'll actually start diving down into into the menus up top here, and we'll actually start creating a schematic. So the only last thing is you can see on the bottom here uh, we actually have inform uh, information pane, and so this is useful. So going right to left here, uh, you can see what uh, what function we're on currently. So if we switch back to place a component. You can see it tells you what, what mode you're in. This is the uh, units that we're in currently. And, and as we said before, we can actually switch this over to inches. To the left of that, you can see that uh, this is your um, how much you're differing from your home spot. And so if you see, so right now I'm at the, this is the absolute position, x and y, right? So right about here is uh, 6.3 and 4.4. 4.05, right? That's just an arbitrary position on the schematic. Now, this is currently showing the difference from uh, a zero point, which you can see is down here. Oh, sorry, up here. So the it's pulling from the zero point of there. You see it, we're at zero, zero, and also the dx, dy is at zero, zero. So if we move to an arbitrary position, right, and then I hit the space bar, now you can see that the dx dy is at uh, zero zero. So now everything's being measured from that single point. This is actually more useful in the uh, the layout program, but it also can have use uh, here, especially if you're drawing things. You want to draw a you know very nice square. You can use that to measure out line widths and everything else. Uh, going to the left here, so we have what file you're in. We have the uh, and then the actual information about a component, which obviously we removed from the schematic. So we'll just drop this component and we'll get back to the other features on the bar. Moving to the left a little bit more, you can see that we are currently, um, Z16 here refers to the zoom level. And so as we move out, you can see Z23, Z32, and then as we move back in, it also goes down. And so that's how you can just reference what zoom level you're at and have a quick glance at that if you are kind of lost in your schematic. Finally, if we actually select the component, then you can see that all of this information comes up about that component. Now, we haven't actually entered inf information about this yet, like the actual refer reference designator, the name of the component, the name of the, uh, the actual schematic symbol, what, de what device it in, what device it library it's in, we've already seen, obviously, because we picked it from there. Footprint, we haven't associated yet, and then description and keywords. So all these things, as we actually go in and modify and create new components we can actually we'll actually see some of these things now important thing to mention here is that uh, power of KiCad is actually in a lot in the contextual menus and so we can right click on the component itself since we actually have that component uh, selected already and we can actually go in and start uh, editing some of these values and you'll see that some of these change so we see here that the reference designator is set. Now if we don't actually, we don't need to set this manually, that'll go that'll go on its own uh, as we actually assign uh, annotations and everything. But if we want to assign values then we can uh, we can actually do that here, right? So we can we can say uh, field value maybe 100 ohms, change that here, hit OK. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the reference here. We need to select that first and then we can change the 
the field value to 100 ohms. <laughs> ah, and that's still selected up here. And we'll R question mark. Sorry about that. <laughs> and you can add your own fields too if you want to have custom values for, uh, you know, maybe you want to have a color designation, right? If you're using a very specific type of component. Uh, and that's a lot more useful as you get into more complex components. Resistors are not the best example there. Up here we can see as we actually select on the component um, units, that'll be set again in the library editor, which is a different video. Orientation, you can rotate it here, but we can also rotate it on the schematic itself. You can mirror components with uh, resistors, they actually mirror fine, so there's, there's not much need for that. Chip name, uh, we can reset the library defaults, which is all built in. And then you could start actually showing your uh, visibility of, of what you want to see here. So as we, if we don't want to show the reference designator on the actual schematic, then we can just take that off here, or we could rotate it and everything else. And so you just do that by selecting each one and then rotate, or, and then selecting how you want it to look. You can also change the style and justification, all that other stuff. So since we changed the value, and it's proper now, right, we should see the uh, value down here uh, change from R to 100. If we select it, select the component, and now we see that there is 100 here. If we zoom in on the component, we see that, oh, yep, it's listed as a 100 ohm resistor. And this is, this is more of a European style um, of component. If you've seen resistors on um, other programs, you might see them as little squiggles, but this is uh, KiCad defaults to this, uh, this kind of rectangular look. So, and we can go over that more as well once we could dive into the libraries. All right, so that's kind of a very brief overview of just the EE schema and what you can do with it. We'll dive more into actually connecting components using more of these, um, more of these functionalities here on the right. Each of them will kind of be its own video. And then when we start actually piecing things together, you'll see how everything fits and how you can actually create your own schematic.